This company's never been more profitable. You mean hugely profitable? I like it. Dayporter.com presents The Profitable Cleaner, a podcast on commercial cleaning sales and entrepreneurship. The one podcast that's not afraid to discuss real sales strategies with real cleaning professionals that produce real profits and real results. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Profitable Cleaner. Uh, super excited for it today. Today's going to be a little bit different. We're going to actually give you guys some insight and bring you guys, uh, of course, the people that are most valuable to us um, within Day Porter is our team. So, team, welcome to the Profitable Cleaner. Nice to have you. Hi. 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 Morning. It's good to be here. I know this is here. the first time. Yeah, this is the first time you guys are here, even though a lot of you edit everything that, that goes on in here. So we <laughs> technically have been in, in this program before. Um, since it's Independence Day for Nicaragua on the 15th and Independence Day for Mexico on the 16th, um, we figured it would be really cool to do a clash here between U.S., Mexico, and Nicaragua and highlight the team, basically. So do me a quick favor, guys. Um, just tell me real quick your name. What do you do here for Day Porter? And something fun, a fun fact about you. Something you love. Favorite movie, <laughs> love that, whatever it is. We're actually going to kick it off. Let's kick it off with Andrea. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Andrea. i here in Day Porter. I am the content creator and slash the social media manager. And something fun about me, well, I love, I really enjoy um, doing yoga and spending time with my dog, Mila, that is a beagle. So, yeah, that's me. <laughs> nice. Nice. All right. I like it. I like it. Daisy, kick us off. Or second person. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Hi, this is Daisy. I was born and raised in Nicaragua. Um, I'm an SDR, so a sales development rep here at Day Porter. So basically, I'm the one who is doing uh, cold calling, hunting through LinkedIn, email. So basically, uh, breathing in the, in the prospects next to get a possible sale or opportunity for our clients. And right. a fun fact about me, I can literally uh, uh, say all the Shrek movies script. Like from memory, I know <laughs> I know them from the top of my head. I don't know if that if that's valuable, but I do. Spanish know them. or English? <laughs> uh, Spanish. It's, it's better. All right, in cool. that's a good that's a good party trick. It's a good party trick. Yeah. I'll make sure you use it. Which, by the yeah, way, whoever's I do coming to me. whoever's coming to the mastermind, you're gonna get to meet Daisy. So she will be she yes. will be there attending. All right, Elia. <laughs> Elia, <laughs> tell us about you and a fun fact. And what do you do here with Dave Porter? Uh, my name is Elia. I born and raised in Nicaragua. I live here, and what I do is I'm a day porter manager, and I also part of the content team. And what I do here is to take care of a lot of things, to take care of what's going on inside of the team and inside of you guys. I mean, what you need, what you need to to communicate with uh, with us. And something funny about me <laughs> is I have really, really, really smart ears. Really it's, it's small, small, sorry, small, yes, small, small ears. Okay, I was like, small, yeah, smart okay. ears. It's like, like, like my ears they, have their they are own also brain smart, and everything. <laughs> okay, you see, this. you have really small ears. They are and tiny. Then... <laughs> All right. Well, if you're just watching the, if you're just hearing the podcast, you just wonder what just happened. If you're in the YouTube video, then you just got to see her small ears. So there you go. You get to go to YouTube and see her small ears. Okay. So guys, I want to keep this episode up to like 30 minutes. Okay. And I, a lot of the times people reach out to us and a lot of people are interested in hiring a virtual team. A lot of people um, don't understand the difference between outsourcing to someone else, like another company or other people versus bringing someone internally, right? And then there's obviously some, almost like some myths or some pre preconceptions or something about hiring somewhere else, right? We always, it's, it's so funny, a lot of people hire, go directly to the Philippines, they go directly to India, and they don't, they don't, whenever we mention Nicaragua, they're like, what, 
And whenever we mention Spain too, they're like, I didn't even, how do you even get people there? Which is interesting, right? So let's start here. First things first. What, who did you, like not who, but what did you use to do before joining Day Porter? Tell, tell us a little bit about the work that, uh, out, out there. Because again, a lot of people, they pay big companies and those companies hire somebody. How much did you guys use to get paid? What were the working conditions? Things like that. Let's give some insight to people on, on what it is um, on that. Okay. Well, uh, before uh, joining Day Porter, I actually was working, uh, the pandemic had, had already started, so I was working remotely, but for a Nicaraguan company, so I was getting paid in our currency, which is Cordobas, and I used to make um, $2.99, $2.99 per hour, worked 11 hours, and actually I was working for a company that offered another, uh, um, other companies to outsource their team basically which is kind of funny mm -hmm. <laughs> now that yeah. we're talking about this so i was the one offering like hey we have we can give you all the infrastructure if you want to have your team here in nicaragua we can train them we can do that this and that and etc yeah, so always in sales but uh the since it, i was from home um the work conditions were they were a little bit, um, I'm not going to name any names, obviously, yeah. but uh, they were just worried about the numbers and like my performance as an agent, which I get it. I have to perform. Obviously, I have to keep results. But the time that I was there, never they asked me, hey, Daisy, how are you? How are you feeling? Or do you, is, is, is happening something to you today, Daisy? You're, you, you sound something off odd than usual never so to my perspective and my personal experience uh they didn't really care about my personal growth as a professional and as a person so that's why yeah. one of the things that made that made me uh try to move and expand my options and look for another and a better work environment Got and it. the payment obviously because three three ninety nine an hour even though we we live in a very uh, poor country, that's mm -hmm. absolutely nothing. Yeah, no, two dollars and ninety nine cents, three dollars and ninety nine cents, right? That's not a lot. Exactly. Andrea, Anna, did, did you guys have any similar experience? If you didn't, it's okay. But did you guys have anything similar? I do. I I used to to have. Uh, sorry, I used to have like two fifty six dollars an hour less than Daisy, and before day porter i used to work with a company to make calls um and i was getting really sick uh, i was getting like really stressed and my body was like getting like bloating i was getting really really bad i was drinking water and i was feeling bad yeah yeah no that yeah. sucks For like me? your body was showing your your <laughs> the yeah. stress yeah and everything yeah. What about you, Andrea? What are you gonna say? For me, I didn't have like the same experience as Daisy and Elia because um, actually I am in Spain, so all the working experience that I had was here in Spain. But what I experienced was poor leadership, poor leadership, and that affected a lot in my creativity. Like I felt that I couldn't like expand my creativity, and also it affected a lot my my trust in myself. Like having a poor leadership experience, like it it doesn't help to like connect with the company you know it doesn't help to connect with the company connect with your boss and actually do a job that you are feeling like really proud of because you're never receiving like the the the, the impulse the, the impulse to do it or the like to find a goal to do it yeah no i get you i get you no i like yes. it yeah it sucks right like obviously pay matters leadership matters and then caring about the employee matters and then of course you got to perform right like in return if you take care of your employees they will perform james do you have a question or do you want me to keep keep rocking it no i just actually have a quick comment um i think the biggest misconception out there kind of what you were talking about at the beginning angel is like oh we outsource and then we don't view like people as people 
even though they're in a different country, maybe you don't see them. Or like I've actually physically never met Andrea, Elia, or Daisy, right? Uh, it's like it's hard to feel this uh, impersonal connection. And so therefore, I think a lot of people view outsourcing or building a virtual team as transactional. When I hope people listening, if you have considered it or if you're curious about it, you view it more as building a team just like you would with someone in office because a lot of what we're about to talk about is exactly probably what you do with your very own staff with the people in your actual office. The only difference is it's virtually and we have to apply those same skills and management and leadership just in a different platform, which I think really actually makes us unique and I hope is what something you gained from this episode today. Agreed. I just want to add something real real quick to what James said that like you said leadership is a problem and you're you're building a team virtually so you have to put a little bit more effort because you don't know the your team in person like you said so it's a little bit more tricky but it's also a very good experience um and the tools that we have to do it which we're going to talk about later um has helped us help us a lot I I believe Yeah, no, agreed. I mean, so a lot of the, a lot of the, like in commercial cleaning, we know two things. I mean, we know one thing for sure, and that is that margins are not high, right? Margins, profit mm -hmm. margins are not high. Most of our cost goes into labor because, of course, you need cleaners, right? You need administrative staff. You need things like that. Where, where in commercial cleaning, a, a, a somebody virtually can come in handy is, I mean, you can lower your cost and or keep your cost the same, but multiply the manpower that you have. You don't need an executive assistant in office. Like, you don't need someone following you around in the office. You need the right systems and somebody that's behind their computer, right? Somebody that's ready to tackle some stuff. And then, as somebody cold calling, you don't want your main sales guy having to do all the cold calling, having to create his own content, having to post it. Like, it's part of the game, of course, their activities, but you can find somebody else to do it. Social media management, right? That tends to get pawned off to somebody in the company, uh, like HR or the, or the quote-unquote marketing department, which is one person trying to think all this through, when you, when you literally have a lot of creatives out there. Um, so let me ask you guys this, though. Most people go to the Philippines. Most people go to India. Uh, rarely, only only if you're like lat Latino or Mexican, then you know like to go. Like if you're Hispanic, you're like, mm, what about my peeps, right? What about Colombia? What about Spain? What about Nicaragua? Like if you don't if you don't know, you don't know, right? That's what I've noticed. What are some um, jobs that you feel like that come from the U.S. that can go over there that w you guys would be able to crush? Like, I know for a fact, like, I don't know if there's a lot of software developers down over there. Like, there is in Pakistan, for example. Like, they have some crazy developers. But what are some roles and jobs that you guys feel um, Nicaragua can do? Um, and then, two, what do you guys think makes Nicaragua peeps different? I believe that some of the roles that are most common here are customer service, for sure. And IT, no management, but uh, yeah, IT, IT services and credit repair. Mm -hmm. Those are the, 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 the three roles that are huge here in Nicaragua. And I think what makes us different, first of all, is that I feel like since we are used to b being under a poor little ship team, um, We really want to change like the environment, and we really have. We really want. We want. We want to work because we we need the money. You know. I mean, I have in my previous job experience, I have had uh, coworkers that I used to work 11 hours, but they worked like uh, 15 hours just to make a little bit of extra time to be to make a little bit of more extra money. And the good part of it is that we are bilingual and. Uh, a lot of people uh, don't, I think they, they're, um, how do you say when it's not like, uh, um, I don't know how to say it in English. You can, you can say it Cuando, cuando está no under, underrated. Yeah, <laughs> I, I got it. Like, I, the, uh, you, yeah, undervalued? You, you saw, I, ha I had it in my, under, uh, yes. Okay. Like the bilingual stuff, because 
I am bilingual. I speak English and Spanish, and I have booked a lot of opportunities just because I, I, I speak Spanish. Got it. Got it. I like it. I like it. What about you, Elian Andrea? What jobs do you guys think are kids? Not like what jobs do they offer there already? Because credit repair is a, is a company or is a type of business, but like um, customer service is a good one, right? Uh, about what they say, sales. We People are really good at sales here. And I can tell you that if you tell someone in Nicaragua to do a job, they will learn it. Like, if they don't know, they will learn it. I like, and it. Some, yeah. I like it. And something I think we have is that we talk a lot. And since we talk a lot, we are really people person. We like people. So it's really easy for us to get, like, a connection with the people that we're calling or emailing because we, are, we have that charismatic vibe that, yeah, let's talk. Yeah, I, I would agree 100%. I, would, yeah. I love that. <laughs> the sassy Latina. For me, there is two things. And it's hard work and we're real charismatic. So sales is like the perfect role for, for someone in Nicaragua. They're really charismatic. They're really welcoming. And they're, I can assure you, like, in Nicaragua, there's a really poor salary. So if they got a job that is from the U.S. and they're going to pay them more, there actually you will find someone that is really loyal to you, that is going to really appreciate your, uh, the work that, that, that he or she has. And that person is going to really hard work hard. I that like person it. is going to work really hard to maintain the job and to get better and to exploit their skills. Because I can guarantee you we have a lot of skills that Maybe we don't know that we have, and we for that exact for that reason we have the a good leadership to exploit that skills. Hundred percent. What's a good? What's a normal pay over there? So two ninety nine. So like if if somebody is thinking about you know what I'm gonna go hire someone over there, what would be a good starting pay for them to say I want to attract some good talent? What's a good range? You can start with five dollars an hour. And that's a good, like, you're going to have the attention of the people here because that's not a basic salary here in, like, in general. Like, a basic salary here is 2.50, like, Daisy says, 2.9, $3, but that's, like, the max. And if, exactly. if I want, like, somebody, like, crazy experience, top of the top of the cream down there, like... Like, one of the best of the best, how much do you think I can start? Like, what would get their attention? Like, not like an entry-level not like an entry-level role. $10? Ten, $10, I believe it's a good, like... Like, pay. you'll turn, yeah, you'll <laughs> turn the heads, right? You'll turn heads. Exactly. I, I, so think, because you, you think about never that hear as a... Well, you're going to get, a, you're gonna get a, a, an offer like, hey, I'm going to pay you $10 an hour. You, you're going to be like... Yeah. You know? I wish you had the little gifs, but, um, yeah... People think about it. Like, how much is the minimum wage somewhere else? Like, you got to pay your cleaners twenty dollars an hour, right? And they're the ones doing all the crazy labor. Like, with twenty dollars, you can build either two super crazy, superior, like they already have the experience, or like three um, entry level um, um, reps in Nicaragua. So, like, there's a lot of opportunity over there. And I would agree that the charismatic, the sales part is there. The customer service is definitely there. I'm not worried. And you guys do make connections with anybody that cr comes in your path. No matter what we throw you in at so far, um, everybody enjoys having a conversation. And you guys aren't scared of picking up the phone, sending the email, making the <laughs> connection, creating the video, right? I, I think. And if they are rude, uh, for, for any reason, I just laughed. I don't take it personally. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's some other added benefit, too, um, that maybe you guys don't even pick up on, but from someone here that in the states that have worked with you guys for two years now picks up on is like you guys really understand american culture honestly um like pretty well explain like, that a little bit what yeah do you mean by that? So, yeah so like one we have similar uh likes and music right it's not too far off um we use similar slang uh, there's not a lot of cultural difference. Like we have worked with other people and I love them to death. Don't get me wrong. Like in India, but there was like a, like how they would like, dear sir, like greet you on the phone, which like, yeah, that's proper English, but that's something you would never say when like, 
uh, Daisy would be like, hey, man. Yeah, like those like little, yeah. How's it going? Yeah, how's it going? Those little <laughs> cultural uh, differences and just how how you speak, and also the time zone. This is like so underrated. So many people in the Philippines, India, Pakistan, where a lot of people try to find a virtual person in, they're working like odd hours of the night. Like so, if you're talking about India right now, it's eight thirty in the morning for me right now. It's eight thirty in the morning in Managua, Nicaragua. Right. So we're on the same time zone, mountain daylight time. If we're talking India, it's literally 830 at, the, at night and their shift is just starting. And I do think your mind does something differently when you're trying to like be a peak performer at 3 a.m. versus 3 p.m. So I think that's yeah, totally I think that's something that's like not said enough, like just the geographical and cultural like similarities if you're talking about trying to work with someone countries away, it seems like a good fit. And also, I would like to add, like, for anybody who is hearing this, uh, if you want to outsource to Latin America, it's so much more cost effective because uh, it's cheaper and you're, you're a mute angel. Oh, I thought you were talking to me. I thought he was talking to me. Sorry. No, no, Sorry going, going, <laughs> I was saying that it is so much more cost effective Uh, and you're going to get the same or more amount of talent that you will get if you went to the Philippines or some, or I, any, any I other I agree place. with that, Daisy. The one thing I want people, though, here in this, when we talk about cost and, like, the reason why I think Angel wanted to talk about the hourly wage is to talk about how vastly different it is. When, like, at a bad company in Nicaragua, you're going to pay $3 an hour when we could easily come in and pay five, six, seven, ten dollars an hour. Like that's below minimum wage here in the US. But we can't just make it about cost. So one of the best things about having a virtual team is yes, it is more cost effective. That's a win for every business owner in the US. But again, you can't just like I think Angel, you said something yesterday and I'll let you say it again, but like your goal should be to grow them both financially and personally with you. And okay. like, if, if it's a starting $7 an hour, that's starting. Don't view it as a transaction. Because yeah. Ultimately, like Daisy is a revenue generator with her skill set and sales. So like that needs to grow with her with the more results and ROI and growth she brings in. So I don't want people to hear this like, oh, yes, this is cheap. No, it's a good way to start a new strategy for your business that's cost effective, but your goal should be to grow them financially, just like your goal is to grow your revenue. Um, so I just want to make that very clear. Yeah, no, totally 100%, agree. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, I think like if you think about it, right, let's just look at it directly. Um, like as humans, if I were to buy a $5 burger or a dollar burger, there's a reason I don't eat fast food. Like I'm like, the hell am I eating in this? That's a dollar. That just trips me out. Unless, I mean, I, they do produce like intensely, but I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I trust it anymore. Um, I'm like, ah. <laughs> so, but it's normal, right? So like, that's the hard part about hiring someone out. Um, I, I, we got to stop saying outsource. I just hiring somebody that's not in the U S I think that's more remote, normal, right? Someone remote. Um, when you do, when you say, okay, I'm going to pay this guy, you know, hundred thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars by the way like a wage a starting wage sdr like here in the u.s is is 50 plus or 40 plus at a minimum forty thousand, right um but when then when you get to look somewhere else and then they say hey well, i'll do it for five dollars it's it's hard for our brain not to go okay well if they're cheaper that means they're less right again similar like a yeah. burger if a burger is a dollar Versus if I'm going to spend a hundred, I've, I've spent a hundred dollars on just one piece of steak and I'm like, best fucking piece of steak I've had, right? Like I would take this all day. But the whole point of where I'm going with this is I think that's where a lot of people fall short. We just because we pay them less, we see them as, as less. It's a misconception. Uh, misconception. Yeah, right. It's like a, it's an illusion. And then we keep them uh, inside this little box, right? Like they can't leave their country. They can't do this. They can't. And we put them in this, like, oh, they can just be VAs. I hate the word VA in that sense. It's the same thing, but, I mean, it's just me. But, like, it's like, no, it's a sales development rep, not an appointment setter. It's a salesperson, right? Like, I know even Elia, your boyfriend, he makes more money than some of people in the U.S. here. And, he, and, and I know he also works with a U.S. company. And he's like, 
super valuable to them, but he's been there for years. Like they've learned how to like grow him, coach him. They've took care of him. Right. So that's, that's the opportunity that, that presents itself with a virtual team. It's I can hire three people at the same time instead of hiring one, but then I get more, my return on investment can be faster. I can get a return on my objective and I can get a return on time. Let me ask you guys this. Okay. I'm going to just start throwing some myths out here. Or not myths. Some some things people are thinking. They're like, okay, all right, I get it, James Angel and Andrea, Daisy and Ellie. I get it. I should get a, a, a virtual assistant. I should get somebody um, in, in remote. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Okay. I don't know though. What about their English? What it like? My biggest concern is that they can't. They won't be a, a, able to do the job because their English doesn't get in the way. Uh, gets in the way. Tell me one thing. How did you guys learn English? Between the, right? How did you learn English? Um, <clears throat> and then two, does it actually get in the way? I am actually self-taught. I learned English by myself. Uh, I I mean, I did receive English class in, like, the school, but English here is, uh, in the schools, not not that good. <laughs> so I just basically, whenever I was uh, listening to any song I, in English, I looked the lyrics in Spanish and vice versa, and that's how I learned, and practicing, obviously. Um, obviously, at the, at the beginning... I mean, uh, there are there are some people here that have a strong accent because it's not our native language, of course. Uh, but it's something that it, it could be improved by just doing it and talking every day in English, just practicing basically, like you do every everything in your life. That's how how do you get better? Just practicing. So I don't think it's a uh, like I don't think it's a big issue. Okay. The, the the English part, in my perspective, yeah. right? I like it. Because I think it it can be improved, like all skill sets. Agreed. Agreed. And like, they, like Daisy says, and if you don't give the person the chance to improve their English and be calling and starting and give them training, it's always going to be an issue if they don't have that great English, you know, because you're not giving them the chance to start. And, and when you start calling, I know this improves the English of Latin people or in general. That, that are not in the U.S. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Did you teach yourself to Elia, or did you have class? Did you pay for classes, or like they see, I I was in the same school, and yeah, just by myself improving my my English. Nice. Yeah. For me, I had classes in the school, and also every Saturday I went to English classes, nice. and then I did like an exchange year into the U.S. So I also graduated in the U.S. Oh, nice. But yeah, but I keep forgetting some words, and you know, speaking make all the practice, and you're getting better, you're getting better, you're getting better. I think that. The, when I start here, I forget a lot of words with you guys, and I was really nervous because of that. But is that okay? That's fine. I mean, that's fine. It's your second language. It's not your yeah, it's, exactly. It's not your name. Your second language. language. <laughs> you are going to forget some words, and you just have to be like keep um, talking in English and practicing, and you will get better. You will get fluent. I think I think the best thing here is like if you look at our industry, commercial cleaning. It's very strong and bilingual, right? Uh, Daisy, how many how many walkthroughs have you booked on the phone speaking in Spanish, or the fact that you were bilingual? Like, how how has that benefited you just in in this industry? I would say like uh, at least around five, and in one time, one of them actually the the guy was Nicaraguan, so we were, we were, we got to talk about like our our culture. Uh, politics and everything so that's how that has helped me a lot but I have to be careful as well because sometimes I have screwed up some things like say, because I read a uh, Latin uh, last name in the prospect uh, information and, I, and I'm like do you speak Spanish and they're like yes but they, but they but they continue talking in English so I feel like they kind of feel offended that I that I say to him like do you speak Spanish because of their accent so I learn. I I I'm trying to keep that to myself, even though, uh, even when uh, just I only ask it now when they literally cannot understand me, and I can 
here and I know I feel it in my bones that they talk Spanish. <laughs> you got, we got to. So I don't get, I, I don't get, I don't if get. You're, if you're still the business, I mean, if you're still a CEO or business owner that thinks that everybody's supposed to not have an accent, you're just crazy, man. Um, Because I've seen some people that don't have accents that speak, speak English that speak like a kindergarten. Kinder, like a, you know, like it speaks like a first grader. Like, I, I've seen Grayson talk. Grayson has better English than some people that are professional. So, like, I'm like, come on. And then, two, well, one, Grayson has a big vocabulary. Let's just start there. Um, the second thing is we're in the U.S., man. We're a blend of all kinds of, of ethnicities, of all kinds of accents. Like, sometimes I think they're Mexican, and they're like, oh, no, man, I'm from uh, – which one was it? They were from – I, I think it was like I, I was gay also. they were Lebanese and I could have sworn they were Mexican and they could have sworn I was German. It was just a, a mess. It was a mess. But that's the beautiful part about the U.S., right? And and it, you do play to your advantage. So the first one is if you're scared that the English is not going to work, one, I like shout out to Babco Services. Let's put them here on the notes. I know they hire their cleaners internally. And the first thing they do is they pay for English for classes sure, for dude. every single one of them so that yes. they can move them up. And they can build them up. I I love that. If you're not doing that, totally. you're messing up. You're messing up. Second myth here. So we just have three myths here. One myth is what about the English? Um. The uh, the second myth is, do we even want to go down the myths actually? Because I know we're running into time. Let's not do myths. Let me ask you guys something. I'm gonna give you guys ten seconds to prepare, and in those ten seconds, I'm gonna I'll share some stuff with the team here. But tell me one thing or one skill set one hack that you guys have implemented in your role that anybody listening to this can move away from what we're talking about, which is hiring somebody virtually, but instead understand um, what you guys do. So if you're in content, what's one hack, what's one software, what's one thing you've done? If, you, if you've been managing the team, what's one hack that's helped you do X? So you're going to tell us what that one hack is and then Daisy somebody listening that wants to know how to cold call, how to book walkthroughs, what's one hack or what's your favorite source, anything like that. So I'm going to give you guys 10 seconds to prepare, right? And in that meantime, um, while we prepare here for that question, because I love that question, um, just just remember, right, like hiring somebody virtual, somebody, somebody remote, it's all about setting them up to win with you. And I just want to touch that there is a difference between outsourcing versus bringing somebody internal. Every time we hire a remote or somebody outside of the U.S., especially when it's like outside of the U.S., right, people automatically go towards the outsourcing. I grab this work, I give it to you, I put it, give it to somebody else, and that's considered outsourcing, and you complete it, you give it back to me, right? It's a really transactional thing. The, the, the issue with that is you're not giving somebody a, a sense of commitment to the company, you're not really helping them and paying them directly a lot of the times, right? Like somebody else is managing their salary. And then three, it doesn't, you can literally build so much with so little over there, right? Like your dollar can go so much further. And I can tell you right now, we've sent a lot of people that have asked us for marketing, for sales, and we've placed them from Nicaragua inside of other companies and they crush it. Like they absolutely crush it. I even had a guy teaching them how to do software, like teaching one of them how to do software development, and they were running the whole marketing department within three months. So the skill sets are there. The English is there. The friendliness and charismatic is there. So no more boring uh, virtual meetings with your VAs that stay quiet with their camera off. Like, absolutely not. Right? Okay, cool. So again, we have two, con uh, we have content management, and we have an SDR here. Daisy, what's your hack? Somebody listening to this, they're like, okay, show me your skills. Show me one thing that I might not know. What is that one thing, one hack, one strategy? I'm going to go to my all-time favorite, and it's LinkedIn. I mean, obviously, the first outreach that you do usually is cold calling. But uh, what I want to say to everybody that is hearing this is that don't stop at cold calling and email because just going through LinkedIn and make the connection and just leveraging the conversation there can lead to that convert into an amazing opportunity. What's your link? What's your LinkedIn for process your real quick? Like step one, step two, step three, step four, and then at what point do you call? 
Okay, so first I visit the profile of the lead. Then I sent the, uh, the, after that I sent a connection request with a little note, like with a simple message just to sound like a, a little bit friendly, not, not anything pitchy at the beginning because they're not going to mm -hmm. accept you. And then after they accept me, I just uh, look at their LinkedIn profile, find something relevant for them or something that they have been posting or talking about lately. And I bring that into the conversation just to kind of make a small talk first. And then I go to, to the, hey, how are you handling your cleaning, by the way? <laughs> I'm in the cleaning industry, and I notice that you are the one who manages the facility or are the maintenance supervisor or X, Y job title that they have. And then if they don't answer, I give them a call and say, hey, uh, we've been having through uh, uh, some interaction through LinkedIn, but I figured a phone call might be easier because I know you have, that you are a pretty busy guy nice. or girl. And then it's like I a five-step process. Like I like it. So visit, connect, mm -hmm. then send a message, then um, try to have a – if you don't have a conversation, oh, oh, endorse. endorse, try to have a conversation, and then try to give them a call. I like it. I exactly. like it. All right, Andrea, what about you? What is a hack that you have? Okay, so I'm in content, right? So I really enjoy creating content, and I have three tools that are – the main for me and the things that I exploit that I use a lot. Well, I'm not actually a graphic design, but I have a lot of creativity. So I use a lot of Canva to do all the graphics, to do all the graphics. I do Canva and to organize like all the content, like for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, for all the week and organize the ideas and organize the topics for every um, day of the week. We use Trello. That is really helpful for Elia and I and the team to keep the communication flow, to get approved so for some content that really, really help us. And one uh, other thing that, that I enjoy a lot and I'm getting better with practice is creating reels. Like, of course, we have the Profitable Cleaner. And in order to increase our audience, we have to create clips. So we create clips and 15, 30 seconds, that's like the, the magic rule. and Using um, a mu the trending sounds and trending music will help you to increase the views that your reels um, th that the reels that you're creating. So that is like the three tools that I use that really they're really helpful for me, and that I I really enjoy and love to use it. I enjoy to create like all the copies. Something amazing about content is like everything is content, right? So you can have like one piece of information and you can create that in a graphic. You can create that in a video. You can create that in a recording. So that's the pretty like amazing thing about content. Like, and that's why I enjoy it a lot. I like it. I like it. So if you're not a graphic designer, Canva is like will save you. Canva is key. Yeah. Uh, Trello will help you with organization, you. right? And then building reels are going to be so important. I love that. Okay. Elia, what about you? My, well, my tool, my favorite tool to manage is a screenshot monitor. And what is it? It's, uh, it helps, it helps the, the workers to track their time. I mean, when they clock in and they, when they clock out. And it's really good because they don't feel micromanagement. I mean, you can see what are they doing or what are we doing, but they don't feel like you're with a, with watching them in the back all the time. And I think that's really important because also about that, uh, about the screenshot monitor, we have one-on-ones because I think we have to take in mind that if not because you only have a remote team, you're not going to be training and working with them. 100%. 100%. 100 I love screenshot monitor. I don't usually look at screenshot monitor. We use it more as a clock in, clock out tool. But the cool part is, let's say, Daisy's struggling or Andrea's like not finishing the work and she's getting overwhelmed instead of us just going oh man well let's see what happens like I don't know how to help you I get to go through screenshot monitor and it literally can break down like where you're spending your time how much time like if out of your eight hours in a day what app did you use the most which I don't know if you guys knew that but it actually tells me like which app you use the most how long you stay there if it like if they're on inactive for 30 minutes it'll automatically pause them so it's really cool stuff like that and then it helps us only go back if we need it 
So I love Screenshot Monitor. These are some small tools, guys. Uh, what about you, James? What's a tool that you like that we use? What are some of your favorites? Uh, whether it's to keep culture, whether it's to manage the team, have fun. What do you What do you like? Yeah, I really I like our entire virtual ecosystem. Is probably how I would call it. From Screenshot Monitor to Slack is how we communicate. Um, I really like Nooks though. Um, and anyone listening, this show is not sponsored by any of these people. We're just giving you the insight to what works for us. The not Nooks yet. is like a virtual sales floor. It, that's yeah, exactly what and I was it too. just uh, not yet, yeah. yeah. Um, and so it, it allows us to kind of be in our own separate virtual rooms while working. But then, like if if Daisy's having a problem on a cold call, we can jump in and support her, or then we can each we can all quickly get on a team meeting without having to send out a Zoom link and you know make sure check your email or whatever. Right? It's just all like right there. Um, and then team activity wise, I like I like the we do what we call Flare Fridays. Every Friday we spend an hour together. We play a game called Kahoot, which was brought to us by Ellie and Angel and and we just like spend an hour of having fun together. Just like again, you would with your people in office, right? I think that builds a lot. That's how we end our week every week. We look forward to it. And listen, some weeks some weeks we say, hey, it's not about Kahoot and we're going to talk strategy like on the one-off times, right? So I like the ecosystem as a whole. I don't know if one tool is better than the other, um, but I'm, I'm really a Nooks fan, I guess, if I had to pick one. I like it. No, I like it. I'm a Kahoot fan. I'm a Nooks fan. Like, There's no there's no going I'm wrong with it. I'm a, I'm a Slack fan too because it can store all my data in there technically. I can. It's a lot of stuff in there. But totally. If you look at everything, um, yeah. Whenever you give, whenever we are able to give access or we show people what we have in the back end, it's pretty exciting. So it's pretty simple, guys. If you had to get a takeaway from this, is if you're gonna go ahead and hire, go and try it out. Go hire somebody. If you don't know how, we'll show you how to recruit. We'll show you how to pay. We'll show you there's softwares on how to pay. There's ways to find the right talent. There's ways to interview them as well. Right, because just because they since they know how to talk, they will talk themselves into a job as well. So there's specific <laughs> questions, specific characteristics. Everybody knows everybody, so you can probably get really int intense references really fast. And then build a culture. Like if you're gonna commit to somebody, bring them yeah. internally. Right? Don't treat them as contractors. Don't value them based on what you pay them. Instead, be thankful that it's that that it's less than what you want to pay because that will automatically lower your cost. And really, if you're interested in, if you, if anybody here has a content team and doesn't know how to set, does never use Trello, use an Excel sheet. I've seen Excel sheets, I've seen Word docs, I've seen nothing, uh, email. So if you guys want to see like how they have their Trello set up, let us know. If you want to see how Daisy does LinkedIn, let us know. If you do have a virtual team, but you don't have screenshot monitor, you pay them through PayPal and they have to get all these fees, you have a mess. Let Elia know. Like, let us know. And we'll connect you. And if, if you, you want to see the whole ecosystem, Nooks. let us know. Yeah. If you want to jump on Nooks and make some cold call with us, let us know as well. That's what we're here for. We have a strong virtual team. We'll bet on them any day. But, guys, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you for having us. Yes. I just have a quick oh, question shoot. for both yeah, we didn't even James about and this Angel. One, huh? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Yes. Um, now that you have had the experience of having a remote team, would you rather have an in-floor sales team or oh, the whole God. team in, in a floor, <laughs> or would you prefer to stay with the remote? Or you can have a combination of um, both. Or would you prefer it? Based on your experience so far. <laughs> beautiful question. I would, I would have it virtual if I could. That is just me. I used to be on the sales floor. I've been on the sales floor. There is such thing as sales floor. I think, like, depending on what I was selling. But if I'm going to have a team of SDRs, like, all virtual, I don't need them to be in an office. If, if uh, yeah, no, I would do everything virtually, actually. Especially if I got to say, I wouldn't have it virtually if they were all in the U.S. Because I'm spending the same money. If it's in the U.S., then for sure, like, if they're all across the U.S., then I'm just going to hire locally and get an office. But if they're not going to be in the U.S. and it's going to be everywhere, I would rather have everything virtual and just set them up with the right tools and systems 
like the gongs and the bells and there's so much more that we still haven't explored mm-hmm. so i would have it all virtual 100 percent. yeah i agree yeah i totally what about agree you, I, I would want to do a virtual um if i was hiring here locally i'd probably do it in person uh at that point but yeah I, i'm i'm a virtual guy now i guess so um living it uh yeah You're i guess i'm a, yeah <laughs> i'm a, uh, uh, yeah and, I'm, just, and uh, Mexican. I'm all confused shout out to james because you know um again one of the things he could have done is just treat them like a contractor style uh instead he's learning spanish Right. Instead, he's jumping in a call for yes. two hours. He says an hour, yes. but I'm pretty confident it's two hours. Um, like two hours Spanish classes every week, and and having and and forcing himself and pushing himself to speak Spanish. So that's again, that's some other thing. It's not. It's investing in yourself as well to run the team even better. So for sure, yeah, no, for sure. It's I. I think it's. I'd say all the time, these guys amaze me. Uh, the fact that they conduct business in a second language, it just amazes me how intelligent they are and how how valuable that is. I mean, I, I can't even put together three sentences uh, without Not struggling. Yet. And and the fact that they can close deals practically over the phone in a second language is, is mind-blowing to me. So kudos to you guys. I'm so glad to... To know you, um, I'm excited to meet Daisy in person. If you're coming to Clean Profits, you're going to meet the one and only Daisy in yes, person as well. I'm so excited. Hopefully, at the next one, we have Elia and Andrea there in person. So, yeah, no, this is really cool to kind of hear from you guys. Boom. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening in. And last thing, I know somebody's going to say it, so I'm just going to get ahead of it. Someone's probably like, well, they should get out of their country, they should move somewhere. Full disclosure, it's freaking hard. Now that we've learned, it's so hard. We've seen so many, and I've tried to, like, like the fact that there's no nonprofits over there, the only one running, I think there's one by the U.S., maybe the rest gets shut down. Like, it's some crazy stuff over there. That's why I'm saying there's a pool of talent, a pool of hungry people, and now you got to meet three of them. So thank you so much, guys, for being here. I appreciate it. And if you want a, a virtual team, let us know. Thank you for hey, having guys. us.